Harry Markopoulos, no one would listen. Dive into the captivating story of Harry Markopoulos, the relentless whistleblower who tried to expose the largest financial fraud in history, orchestrated by infamous Wall Street legend, Bernard Madoff. In this summary of, No One Would Listen, explore the challenges faced by Markopoulos and his team as they fought to reveal the truth behind Madoff's massive Ponzi scheme. Despite the numerous red flags and consistent submission of evidence to the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, their warnings fell on deaf ears until Madoff's eventual downfall in 2008. Discover the staggering power of a master manipulator, the incompetence of a regulatory body, and the unwavering determination of a few individuals seeking justice. The Madoff Scandal Unveiled when Bernard Madoff was arrested in 2008 for running a fake investment fund, Harry Markopoulos, who had been trying to end Madoff's financial scams, was elated. Madoff's scam attracted various investors, from large-scale financial institutions to people in New York and Florida, swindling them out of approximately $65 billion, making it the biggest financial fraud in history. Madoff's deceptive message to his clients was that he had insider information on trade flow since his clients utilized his brokerage. Markopoulos had enough evidence to prove Madoff's criminal activities and submitted it to the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, on five separate occasions, without getting any response from them. The SEC's lack of action and their dismissive treatment of Markopoulos shocked not only him but also the various investment industry professionals who doubted the veracity of the evidence against Madoff. However, Madoff did not deceive Markopoulos, who, along with his investigators, was determined to develop and disseminate proof of Madoff's unprecedented financial crimes. The Madoff Scandal Markopoulos' talent for spotting fraud and his discouraging struggle to convince the SEC that Madoff was running a Ponzi scheme is detailed in this book. From a young age, Markopoulos demonstrated his skills in mathematics and his gift for spotting fraudulent behavior. Before his investigation, Madoff was known as a reputable businessman with a securities broker-dealer business. However, Markopoulos found at the side of Madoff that investors did not know involved running a hedge fund that operated as a Ponzi scheme. Madoff claimed to have a secret, black box, computer program, but in reality, he simply amassed cash, never invested in stocks and moved money from new investors to existing ones. Markopoulos identified that Madoff was operating a Ponzi scheme in the early 1990s, and in 1999, he learned more details of Madoff's scheme. The book scrutinizes the fraud and Markopoulos attempt to convince the SEC, who refused to listen, and eventually resulted in the catastrophic crash of the Ponzi scheme. Exposing the Madoff Ponzi Scheme A team of professionals led by Harry Markopoulos investigates Madoff's investment claims and exposes his massive Ponzi scheme, despite the SEC's inaction. Harry Markopoulos, an adept quantitative analyst, works at Rampart and assembles a team to investigate Madoff's hedge fund. His team includes Neil Cello, a talented colleague with a keen insight into mathematics, Frank Casey, a Rampart securities marketer, and Dr. Gaitri Kachru, Markopoulos' attorney. Casey is the first person to introduce Markopoulos to Madoff's hedge fund and urges him to design a hedged investment product that could compete with Madoff's offerings. However, the more Markopoulos analyzes Madoff's investment claims, the more he doubts them. Markopoulos discovers Madoff's highly suspicious track record, perfect market timing, and lack of faith from elite firms on Wall Street. Despite Rampart executives and clients imploring Markopoulos to design a product that could compete with Madoff, Markopoulos works closely with Cello and Casey to investigate and understand Madoff's fraudulent activities. As they expose Madoff's Ponzi scheme, Markopoulos submits written evidence to the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, in 2000 and 2001. However, the SEC fails to act on the information. As Madoff's operation expands, Markopoulos and his team escalate their investigation and keep a record of Madoff's activities for nine years before Madoff surrenders himself in 2008. By then, Markopoulos estimates that Madoff was running a $65 billion Ponzi scheme. Despite the SEC's inaction, 
Markopoulos, and his team managed to uncover Madoff's activities and bring them to light. Unheeded warnings on Madoff Markopoulos grows frustrated with lack of SEC action on Madoff's Ponzi scheme. He partners with journalist Michael Okrant, who uncovers evidence of fraud. Despite published articles, regulators remain ineffective. The SEC's inability to detect a fraudulent scheme perpetrated by Bernie Madoff was a source of frustration for financial analyst Harry Markopoulos. He considered approaching the media with damning evidence but refrained, lest it solidify the Ponzi scheme. It was at a financial conference that he met Michael Okrant, an award-winning journalist, who later joined his investigative team. Okrant sources in the hedge fund industry gave him information about Madoff's operation, which was surprisingly large, attracting so much money because it almost never reported losses. Madoff's largest customers ran feeder funds, and he paid fees to these funds for bringing in new investors. Okrant reached out to Madoff, who was calm and cordial while discussing the inner workings of his hedge fund, but failed to provide details about his proprietary computer program. Okrant's article on Madoff appeared in MAR Hedge, a hedge fund industry magazine. A similar article emerged in Barron's, a major financial newspaper soon after. However, these stories had little effect in raising public concern or spurring regulators into action. Despite the evidence presented, the SEC remained complacent, and Madoff's fraudulent scheme continued to operate unchecked. Madoff's International Ponzi Scheme The book portrays Madoff's international Ponzi scheme, which drew in domestic and foreign investors. Markopoulos warned Thierry de la Villahutchet about investing with Madoff, however, Madoff received money from many foreign feeder funds, including money from European asset managers. In 2002, Markopoulos traveled to Europe and spoke to managers of 14 feeder funds that had given their clients money to Madoff. He learned that some offshore havens were avoiding taxes on income by investing with Madoff. Markopoulos strongly suspected that organized crime was also investing through certain feeder funds. He became fearful of the dangers of exposing Madoff and started to protect himself and his family. Exposing the Madoff Scandal Harry Markopoulos and his investigative team uncovered the largest Ponzi scheme in history, but the SEC failed to act in time, leading to devastating consequences for investors. Harry Markopoulos, a former derivatives trader, became an investigator of potentially fraudulent companies after quitting his job at Rampart in 2004. Together with his team, including Frank Casey, Neil Cello, and Michael Okrant, they set their sights on Bernie Madoff's firm. Despite leaving their jobs, everyone continued to participate in Markopoulos' investigation, with Okrant sharing his discoveries about Madoff with the team. In June 2005, the team received their first sign that Madoff was having problems. Over lunch, Casey learned that Madoff was seeking banks to lend money to his investors so they could give him their money plus funds they borrowed. Additionally, the Royal Bank of Canada and Societe Générale had stopped lending money to Madoff investors who wanted to enlarge their positions in his fund. Markopoulos submitted written warnings to the SEC, but they did little to hasten the demise of the Madoff scam. Despite more warnings and a shallow investigation, the SEC allowed Madoff's Ponzi scheme to keep growing for three more years. By 2008, a surge in foreclosures had deepened the U.S. recession, and Lehman Brothers had filed for bankruptcy, triggering a global credit shortage. Madoff investors, worried about liquidity, demanded their cash to offset their losses on legitimate investments. However, the money was gone. On December 11, 2008, law enforcement authorities arrested Madoff, and within a year, the SEC's Inspector General published a critique of its lack of response to warnings from Markopoulos and other sources. Markopoulos testified before two congressional committees about Madoff and the SEC's ineptitude. The SEC's repeated failures to stop Madoff much earlier exposed its structural weaknesses, and remedial actions should be taken, such as hiring more finance experts and fewer lawyers to examine financial firms, offering incentive pay to staffers who uncover large-scale financial fraud, and encouraging investment professionals to submit evidence of potential illegal actions by their employers or competitors.
The Madoff scandal had devastating consequences for investors worldwide. Thierry de la Villa Hutchett, who lost $1.4 billion belonging to his family and investors, committed suicide when he learned he would not get back any money he invested with Madoff. Markopoulos wept for Thierry for days, furious at Madoff and the SEC on the investors' behalf who lost so much. In the end, Markopoulos and his team exposed the largest Ponzi scheme in history, but the SEC failed to act in time to stop it. The Madoff scandal highlights the need for greater transparency when dealing with investments and for the government to take action to prevent future frauds. In the end, Bernard Madoff's Ponzi scheme was revealed to be the largest financial fraud in history, totaling an estimated $65 billion in stolen funds. Harry Markopoulos and his team persisted in their investigation, even when their warnings were ignored by the SEC. Although the impact of their efforts might have come too late for thousands of investors who suffered devastating losses, their work inspired crucial reforms in the financial industry. The summary of A No One Would Listen paints a compelling picture of a courageous group of individuals, determined to expose the truth and protect the unsuspecting from the hands of fraud. It serves as a compelling and sobering reminder of the significance of diligence, transparency, and accountability within our financial systems.